Judo is a martial art, a sport, a set of techniques, ideas, and philosophies. Can we start by uh, maybe you giving a big picture overview of what is Judo to somebody who's like outside all the whole spectrum of grappling sports? Yeah, Judo was originated in Japan that was used as a police tactic for self-defense and you know subduing people. It's the art of being able to throw somebody to the ground and hold and control the situation. Um, I think it's pretty much evolved since then though. You know, it's as you include like the sport aspect of it, it's it's grown to be something more and more dynamic. Um, and it's kind of gotten away from that. So the basics is people wear something called a gi, yep. which I think nicely mimics like outdoor clothing, yep. like a jacket. And uh, they start on the feet and there's, uh, they get to grip each other and, and the scoring works by the more badass the throw is, the more points <laughs> you get. And if uh, you throw the person big and hard on their back, you win the match and it's over. And that's called an epon. Yep, which and, is equivalent to a knockout. So I guess there's no knockdowns. No, judo. we don't count those. Yeah. <laughs> they they got to hit their back and they got to hit it with force. Right. And so there's a huge incentive for the big throws. Yeah. And, uh, and there's also the drama of somebody catching you off guard with a surprise big throw and it's over. Yep. There's, there's two ways of losing really. There's the, I saw this coming, <laughs> right? Like yeah. you just, you see it, but you can't stop it. And those ones tend to be the ones you can live with. The ones that are like really hard to live with are the ones you never saw coming, right? Because that just shows that that person has really outclassed you. Right, so there's like a set of, uh, a small set of throws, maybe we can go through them, that are like, you saw it coming, but you couldn't do anything about it. And then there's the set of throws that are more like surprises. So first of all, the counters, or if you fake one thing and go the other way, then that's a surprise and it's like, oh shit, you off balance the person uh, because they think you're going one way and then you go the other way and then there's this oh shit moment all of a sudden, yep. you, your back is just slammed on the ground. One of the one, I mean, you're good at many throws, but one of them is a, uh, that I think reveals the beauty of judo is the foot sweep. Yep. There's something about the off balance and the timing that if you catch him right, all of a sudden, it's like I had the same feeling when I went skydiving, like all of a sudden the ground is not under you anymore. Yeah, and you just, you go weightlessness for like a split second and you realize you've lost like all control of your limbs. Like it's like zero gravity, right? Like you just, you can't turn, you can't rotate, you can't do much of anything. And then before you know it, you've hit the floor. Yeah. It's a cool feeling when you get thrown um, because you hope to do that the same thing to another person. <laughs> it's like you you just hit the ground hard because it's not, you didn't see it coming. It wasn't a big throw that got loaded up. Mm -hmm. It's like all of a sudden the surprise. And then like this like feeling that your back just slams and there's like the air is out. <gasps> yeah. And the but, worst is when you get hit twice with one throw, right? Because sometimes like the guy throwing you didn't expect you to leave either. So you hit. And then that guy comes down like a second and a half later <laughs> and it's like, boom, boom. And then the wind is just gone from you. Yeah. Those are the worst. And then there's the disappointment. Like then the the intellectual, the cognitive part comes in where you're like, oh shit, I just lost. Yep. And you don't have like a connection to why, right? It's almost like you've just, like you didn't literally get a concussion. Like you you understand and remember everything, but you can't figure out how this just happened. Right, those are the those are the tough ones to deal with. Actually, have you had moments like that where, yeah. where you don't understand how it happened? You have to watch footage to understand what happened. Even yet. when you watch it, you're just like, I don't get it. Like, why wasn't I in a position to stop this? It makes zero sense. Conceptually, when you watch it, you're like, I understand how to play defense. I understand. It looks like I'm in a defensive position, but at the end of the day. I still got thrown. Yeah, you were talking about, what is it, a 2008 match? You have a non-traditional gripping style. Yep. Is that accurate to say? Yep. But, and then you were going against another right-handed player, and then there was some kind of fake that he did, and then he, he caught you. Yep. Can you, can you describe the throw he caught you with? 
he caught me with a drop sale, but he, he kind of like, we were engaged. We were looking at each other and we were kind of at like a stalemate, right? He couldn't really advance. I couldn't really advance. And he kind of just let his gaze like wander off to the right. Like he was looking at something. And then I kind of like, what's over there? And then I got thrown. <laughs> and it's like, uh so first of all, uh, for people who don't know, uh, Seo Sayanagi drop means when you drop to your knees, and uh, Sayanagi is one of the fundamental throws of judo. There's yep. just just a handful. But does that actually ever work? I always wondered that about like boxing or judo. Does the head movement of the person work? Because we're still like kind of dogs at heart. If you look somewhere with a dog, the dog is going to look that direction as well. Does that it, actually work ever? It does. Um, but on a greater sense, what you try to do is not necessarily get like a physical reaction of a look, but a lull of security where like hmm. they've almost like relaxed for that split second because you've lured them into like a sense of comfort. And then that's when you can strike. So you have this, speaking of Sanagi, you have this gigantic, uh, standing Sanagi. Yep. And um, you have a specific grip. One of our challenges is there's a large number of people that listen to the audio version of this. <laughs> so we're gonna have to try to describe some of this stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to try to describe with words. But uh, you have, you grip with your left hand on the lapel of the jacket or like that area. Yep. And uh, there's kind of a lean into the person and I suppose, is there a feeling of a lull there that you're trying to get to where you're just, it feels like you're both calmly dancing before you turn your hips and go in for the throw? I'm actually trying to create a a sense of weightlessness for my lead leg, which would be my right leg, mm -hmm. and a sense of resistance from my partner. So you aren't you both kind of leaning into, into each, other? each other and it creates like an A-frame. Yeah. But when the A-frame is held together at the top half, which would be my left hand and their right hand posted on each other's chest, it means our legs are free to move and our hips are free to move. Right. And they're not gonna feel your leg move. Because of the weightlessness. Yeah. And is there a feeling like, for them, is there a feeling like nothing bad can happen here? We're all relaxed, everything's yep. fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, <then laughs> and then they're standing off at a funny angle and before they know it, I've spun and my back is on their chest and they can't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. 